Oh, just another day of trying to go pro. Cool update, I have hoop lowering power. So now when the hoops are up, I can lower them. I did this little band series to help warm up my glute. Apparently that's what was bothering me in my hip. And this is a home court app, by the way. And what's pretty fun about this, I get a challenge one of the athletes I work with, Will. He's in Austria. But I get to upload a video of my workout and we do like a shooting drill challenge. I was nine out of 10 here. And I send it to him and then he gets to try and beat it. So it's kind of a fun way to stay competitive um, and add some variety to training. And then I did some jumping for my plyometric work after the shooting. And I actually felt a lot better than I thought I was going to because the shooting workout, despite that short video, was kind of short. It was actually a lot longer than the video led on to be. And so pretty happy with how that went, working on my left hand dribble, kind of power dribble into my jump. Looks pretty good. Pretty content with it. And then I was supposed to do some of my athlete training team work. And we had dumbbell snatches today, but I just wanted to use the barbell. When I do a snatch like this. I think about jumping up as high as I can during the movement. I know that sounds kind of like not the best Olympic, you know, Olympic uh, weightlifting advice, but it helps me really emphasize the vertical displacement during the movement versus just throwing it up over my head. So workout part two, had some coffee, then later in the day, finished my athlete training team workout with some rhythm RDLs. And then I also did some trap bar explosive work. I was supposed to do back squats heavier. Didn't really want to do them. Wanted to be a little quick and explosive because I was going to go back to the gym and do some conditioning work. I really wasn't interested in doing some conditioning with sore, achy legs. So I wanted to keep it quick, fast, and give me kind of that athletic explosive feeling. So on the court again, you know, tap the shoes for good luck. And we did conditioning shooting. So basically, this is like a dribble handoff where you get a handoff from the big man and you throw it back to the big man for another handoff and to a jump shot. And this type of stuff is so awesome for you because it's a lot of eccentric loading. It's a lot of friction. Oh, by the way, take a second. I almost threw up right there. I had filmed this after I did a bunch of these and I ate a bunch of beef jerky before going to the gym and I almost lost all my beef jerky just right there. But back to the talk here. When you add this change of direction into your shooting drill, you really do start to impose those friction forces. Talked about this before, I'll just mention it quickly. Those friction forces are something that if you're not doing change of direction on the court with your basketball shoes, you just don't incur them and then you don't adapt to them. And your feet do adapt to those kind of jolty stops that can only really happen because you're stopping because of the friction of your shoes. And then I did this series where I did 10 total reps of sprint down and I sprint into a jump shot that you see here. I'm running beyond the baseline portion because I'm trying to go like an NBA length of a court. This court is a tad bit small. And I'm not worried about makes or misses, worry about speed first into my shot, I'm working on a more rapid deceleration. When I watched myself do this last time, I didn't like how I came to a stop on that pull-up jump shot. And so you see here, I'm trying to quickly sink into it. Then after all this, I went upstairs to do some therapeutic recovery work, whatever the heck you want to call it. Basically just some work to make my knees feel a little bit better. And when I do this, I like to do isometrics and what I've incorporated is isometrics and then I'll do a full range of motion movement after that. For people who do isometric knee extensions, take the time to set up the machine so it's comfortable. For me, I struggled here for a bit and I kept it in the video because I'm not perfect. You probably aren't either, and that's okay. Just don't rush through it. Another takeaway I have from this, by the way, is I don't like to go too heavy. Too often I go too heavy on this, and it doesn't feel very good. Instead, I think the research says 70%, which makes sense, like a 7 out of 10, because that's where you get to feel a nice contraction in the quadriceps, but you don't feel like you're ripping your knee apart or just like this weird bone-like loading feeling. And so about 40 seconds-ish is what I aim for when I do this. And then uh, holding it, contracting, and you know, contemplating the, uh, the agony that I'm suffering through. But all in all, it's a, it's a good workout. I really enjoyed this workout today. I think I'm making a lot of progress. I'm really happy with how I'm progressing in terms of my capacity to do more and more work on the court slowly working in more and more work in the weight room. And over time, we're going to get there. 
And so, you know, I know you guys have been watching this from the very start, and so you have been watching it, you probably can see some of the progress, because I sure can. Um, here are my, you know, overly knee-dominant, on-my-toes type squats, just going through a full range of motion. So as always, thank you guys for watching this. I appreciate you. If you made it this far, feel free to subscribe and follow along. Help the old algorithm out. Appreciate you guys. Take care.